the first couple minutes, it'll be hard, and then it'll go away. <laughs> okay, so tonight we're going to do the immune system, pretty much in its entirety. Okay, the key, one of the key ideas in your future career is this one, the idea of levels of defense. So this is an army term, but it works. So if you wanted to rescue Fair Maiden in Castle Yon, what did you have to go through to get to the Fair the Maiden dragon. castle? The dragon in the moat, right? The boiling oil, the orcs, right? That's the idea, is there's multiple ways your body's going to keep something from getting in, like in an old castle. So we're going to go through the levels of defense. Level one, DEFCON one. Is your barrier. Someone tell me a barrier that keeps things out of you. Skin, Skin is one of them. Keep going. Infection. What was it? Infection. Nope, that's, that's not this one. The lymphatic system. Nope. What was it? Mucus. Mucus. You can say it. All right. What else besides skin and mucus? There's more. Nope, that's all you got? Come on. Let's I see, like unless you're a smoker, you have cilia, right? You have saliva. Do you have tears? You should. What else might keep something out of me? Uh, eyelids. What is it? Eyelids. Okay, that's kind of skin, right? Eyelids are skin. Stomach acid. What is it? Stomach acid. Stomach acid. Stomach acid. Keep going. Sweat. How about sweat? Can barriers be mechanical, like sphincters? They can. We'll put a sphincter up there. You're looking at one right up here. All right. Keep going. Earwax. Earwax. Keep going. Nails. That's kind of skin. Nails and hair. We'll put them on. Fine. We'll make you happy. Nails and hair. Okay. Keep going. How about vomiting and sneezing and coughing? Well, that's, the vomiting is the acid. The coughing, that's a, that's a behavior, but not so much a barrier. Is a physical or chemical thing. Let's see, you're missing a few from the skin. You have sweat, you have oil. wax, what else on skin? Oil. oil. So oil's a barrier. Blood. Blood actually is not, it's further down. So it would be, but not in the way we do it. I'm trying to think what else you may have. Oh, how about some urine? Urine acid. How about some vaginal acid? So mucus, snot, spit, all those funny things. They're trying to keep something out. So as long as I don't cut my skin or have you know, problems making these things, stuff shouldn't enter. But something will eventually get through. right? On the farm, I get cut and everything. So that means I have to go to level two, DEFCON two. These are called your innate defenses. First off, someone tell me what innate means. Immediate. What's it mean? Immediate. Immediate can mean that. It's not really how we use it, though. It's like a program. Born with it. You're yeah, born with it. In other words, unlearned. Right? Hey, what is that word up there? What is that? I don't know. It's bling. What is that? Born with it. So this is, this is something your body will do automatically. You don't have to teach your body to do that. The other word we'll use is nonspecific. OK, that word means something. What's it mean to be non-specific defense? Not choosy. Not choosy. I will kill all of you evenly. Right? So the idea of these defenses is they attack anything that comes through the barriers. Doesn't matter what it is. So A, our first innate defense our group talked about tonight. Inflammation. Okay, medical pros, tell me when something's inflamed what you see. Good. Swelling. Good. Swelling, it's red, it's hot. it's hot, it has pain, right? Maybe pus. Okay, now we gotta figure out what that is, what's that, what's doing that? What is making you get all swollen, hot, red, painful? Histamine. Aha! So let's go over here. Increased blood flow. So why do you want more blood flow to some place? Clogging, maybe? Possibly. White blood cells. White blood cells. Remind me what white blood cells do? 
Kill things. Kill things. You're mobilizing the troops. You're calling in the cavalry. So I'm going to draw blood to the area of infection because I want to kill things. Let's see. What color is blood? Red. Good. Red. More blood would make things get bigger, mm -hmm. right? Get hotter. That would make me hurt, right? So that's the logic. So how does more blood get there? Our group told about tonight. There's a magic drug. Histamine. So histamine directly causes inflammation, causes an increase in blood flow. So how does the blood increase though? What would you have to do to get more blood somewhere? What would you have to do to the size of your arteries? Dilate. Dilate. So one of the jobs of histamine is called vasodilation. Make your blood vessels bigger. Okay? But there's something else you have to do. You have to make your blood vessels, quote, leaky. Okay. Why do you want them to be leaky? So the plasma can seep out. So stuff can seep out, like your white blood cells. So if I make my blood vessels bigger and leakier, is that even English? Leakier? That means fluid's going to leave my blood and go into my tissues and do this. So I'm going to show you an animation of that process after I show you a picture. A problem. Does anyone know what organ that is? Yeah. That's my skin. That's a barrier. But look, the Huns are breaking in, right? So we're breaking through the barrier. So now we have to go to level two of defense. Otherwise, I'm going to be eaten alive. So here come the invaders. Here come the orcs. And now I have to do something. So level two, I'm going to cause my blood vessels to get bigger and allow the white blood cells to escape and head to the front. From lab, do you remember which one these are? On this side? Those are neutrophils, right? Multiple of them. So this is an example of a white blood cell leaving my bloodstream to get toward the, the breach in the wall. So notice my skin is getting redder, hotter, swollen, or right? That's what I'm seeing as an effect of blood leaking to that site. And what are they gonna do there? Glad you asked, what are they doing? Eating. Eating, Eating. Eating. destroying. You know, there's lots of words you could use for that. The goal is to get the troops to the front. That's what inflammation is. All right? So let me show you an animation of that idea using big words. Right. The inflammatory response is an important nonspecific defense against tissue damage. It begins when injured tissue cells release <coughs> chemical signals that activate the endothelial cells of nearby capillaries. Within the capillaries, adhesion molecules called selectins are displayed on the activated endothelial cells. No, I don't care. These adhesion molecules attract neutrophils, slow them down, and cause the neutrophils to roll along the endothelium. That cool? As the neutrophils roll along <coughs> the endothelium, they encounter chemicals that activate integrins, which are adhesion receptors on their surfaces. These integrins then tightly attach to adhesion receptor molecules on the endothelial cells. This causes the neutrophils to stick to the endothelium and stop rolling. Why would you want them to do that? Because you want them to stay there. Why do I want them to stay there? Because you want them to leak out. Yeah. That's right. Because think about it. You have white blood cells everywhere in your body, but you want them to stay here. <coughs> that's where the enemy is. Right? So if you think, you got to think about military logic here. You want the troops where the enemy is. So I'm going to have my white blood cells stick right in here, because here come the enemy. Now I gotta get them out of there, over to there. So now the histamine logic kicks in. Right? This accumulation of neutrophils along the walls of the capillary is referred to as margination. The inflammatory mediators released by the injured tissue bring about changes in the environment that cause mast cells to degranulate and release histamine. Thank you, Benadryl group, because they taught you that tonight, right? Histamine's being released by a mast cell. And that's going to then cause changes in my blood flow. Histamine causes vasodilation and an opening of the junctions between the endothelial cells, allowing fluid and leukocytes.
to leave the capillary and enter the infected tissue. As I'm turning red, the holding. neutrophils now undergo dramatic changes in shape and squeeze through the endothelial wall into the interstitial tissue fluid. This process is called extravasation. The neutrophils, followed by other types of phagocytes, are attracted to the damaged site by chemotactic substances released by bacteria and tissue breakdown products. They ingest and destroy invading bacteria. Right, so the troops are at the front doing their job. Doing the histamine. So Benadryl is an antihistamine, so it stops this process. Right, that's the logic of an antihistamine is to stop the inflammatory response. Make sense? So that's inflammation, that's round two. So when I get a sticker on the farm, a couple days later, it's bright red and swollen. I know, okay, I broke through my skin, somebody's trying to eat me. Therefore, my white blood cells are trying to do their job and clean up that problem. Right? So, PCC says, thou shalt know what the different white blood cells eat, thou shalt. So let's make a list over here. You learned this in lab. We're supposed to know what the different white blood cells